Welcome to lab 3 of Chem 207. This is the titration of an amino acid. Today we'll be titrating 0.5 molar glycine solution. We are not looking for an end point today. We will be mapping out the change of pH of the glycine solution as we add base to the solution. We're going to acidify the glycine solution with 6 molar HCl until we reach a very low pH about 1.5 and then we will begin recording points of change of pH as we add base. The chemicals that you will need include a 0.5 molar glycine solution, 0.5 molar NaOH, and 6 molar hydrochloric acid. Also distilled water for rinsing your pH probe as well as to include in your acidic solution of titration. The glassware that you will need include a 25 milliliter volumetric pipette with a rubber bulb, a waste beaker, a 400 milliliter waste beaker should be enough a 100 milliliter beaker to separate your acidic solution from the stock and a 25 or 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. For the titration aspect you can use a 250 milliliter beaker with a magnetic stirring bar and a hot plate with magnetic stirring capabilities. Always check your hot plate that it is capable of magnetic stirring before you begin. You will also need, of course, a burette. This one is a 50 milliliter burette, and I have already prepared it with 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. Please refer to lab 2 if you would like to know how to rinse and prepare the burette for the experiment. This is the pH meter. I have already begun the calibration process. We have pH 4, pH 7, and pH 10 buffers. You will be given the buffers already made in the cart and they are colored for easy distinction. Okay, so I will prepare the acidic solution so that we can begin the titration. I will begin preparing the acidic solution by measuring out 25 milliliters of distilled water and adding it to the titration beaker. Then I will pour out some of the glycine mixture into another beaker to avoid contaminating the stock solution. When you receive the glycine solution, you will probably not get it in a volumetric flask, but you should still separate the solution out to prevent the contamination of your main sample. It's a little bit tricky, but you can take the bulb out several times and then put it back on. It is better to do it slowly this way than to do it all at once because the liquid may come shooting up into the bulb and contaminate your bulb. I need a little bit more glycine, so I'm going to cover the tip at the top with my finger to prevent the liquid from flowing down. Pour myself some more glycine and then continue with the suction. It's a good idea to use both hands and to go slowly when the liquid is close to the top. When you use both hands, you can remove the bulb with your right hand, if you're right-handed, for example, 
and quickly cover the top of the hole of the pipette with your left hand so that when you want to let go of the liquid you can simply let go of your left hand a little bit and then monitor until you get to the calibration line. I have gone under You do need to see this at eye level, so take the beaker and use it to help you see the line at eye level. Okay, perfect. Now transfer it to your titration beaker. Luckily, this acid is very mild. However, always remember to add acid to water. Never add water to acid. Do not worry about the last drops that are caught in there. The manufacturer has already accounted for that volume that will be left behind. And if you keep trying to push out the excess drops, then you will end up getting more than 25 milliliters. The pipette is calibrated to deliver. All right, so I have 25 milliliters of water distilled and 25 milliliters of my 0.5 molar glycine solution. Now I can set up my pH meter to read the current pH. I want to read the current pH because I will be adding six molar hydrochloric acid to the glycine in order to drop the pH to about 1.5 and this is to be able to capture the two inflection points when we do a titration. When the probe is set into the sample, I will come back and show you the pH. I have set up the pH probe inside of the acidic solution. Let's read the pH. In the meantime, collect a disposable pipette and six molar hydrochloric acid so that you will be ready to add hydrochloric acid dropwise. All right, the pH meter has stabilized and our initial pH of the glycine solution is 4.97. I will be adding six molar HCl dropwise until it reaches about 1.5. So this part you want to do a little slowly so that you don't overshoot it. And I did here on the pH meter, I pressed auto so that the pH would be red constantly. Um, it's right here below the read slash enter button. They're all the same button, so press carefully the bottom part where auto is listed so that it can read continuously. I'm gonna add one more drop. That's two drops. Keep in mind that we're adding 6 molar acid to a 0.5 molar solution, so 
it will go a little bit fast. We have to add a little more. Three, four, five to get us there. If the pH looks like it's stabilizing and it's not close to 1.5 yet, then add maybe a couple more drops to push it toward the acidic side. Like I mentioned before, we are dropping the pH so that when we start plotting our points, we can start from a very low pH and capture all of the changes in pH as we add more base. Our goal in this lab is to start from a very low pH and end the titration when the pH has reached between 10 and 10.5. This way, we can see what's going on at every point and determine when the amino and the carboxylic acid group are deprotonated. You may need to press auto a couple of times if your pH meter keeps stabilizing. The stabilization causes the probe to stop reading the pH, but we want to know how it's changing until we get to the right pH we want. So. Perhaps I'll add a drop or two here. Three, four. Just to get us very low. 1.52. Mm. I'd like the number to be a bit more even, so I'm going to add a bit more drops. I think that's enough. Okay. Let's read the pH one more time just to be sure that we have read it with everything well incorporated. So at no addition of sodium hydroxide, we have a pH around 1.46. My first point will be 0 0.00 milliliters.
Although the pH meter was reading way below 1.5 earlier, don't be worried if your pH is significantly lower. Allow the solution to be stirred and the probe to come to stabilization and you'll be surprised that your pH is not as low as you think. I may need to add a few more drops just to be sure the pH is starting right where I want it to so that the curve can have good points. I will keep watching the pH meter and see where it stabilizes and add a few more drops of hydrochloric acid and I will update you in a second. I added a bit more hydrochloric acid and allowed the solution to continue stirring until it was well incorporated. I read the pH just now and it is at 1.39. Since it is well below 1.5, I think it is okay for that to be our first point. With no hydrochloric acid added, I'm sorry, without any sodium hydroxide added. We can go ahead and begin to add the sodium hydroxide so that the pH will start to increase. We will be adding it in one milliliter increments. So let's get started. One point oh, remember to read the burette in the data that you collect so that you can have your volume recorded to the second decimal place. And let's check the pH. One point four eight. Let's add another milliliter. Two point zero zero. Most of the time I try to aim for perfect one milliliter increments, but if you go a little bit over like 2.10, don't worry about it. Just make sure you record the volume to the accurate place and it will still look okay on your plot. I will do the first five additions on camera and then continue on my own until uh, toward the end, which will be closer to pH 10 and the pH 10.5 range. And we will take it from there. Let's read our pH. One point five six third edition I'm at three point one zero The 50 milliliter burette can be a little bit tough to read since it is very tall inside of the hood. Be sure to get your best guess of the volume. Do not try to stand on chairs or stools to read the volume. This is too dangerous in the laboratory setting. Let's read our pH.
1.63. As you can tell, this will be a very long and tedious collection of data. However, this lab is a bit more accommodating just because you are not looking for a specific endpoint and you do not have to worry as much about overshooting the perfect endpoint. 4.00 milliliters. If you take your time, these labs always give you very beautiful plots. Let's read the pH. One point seven zero. And number five, 5.00 0 milliliters. And we will wait just a second. This lab is in preparation for lab four, where you will do the similar process to an unknown amino acid. You will try to determine what amino acid you have based on your titration curve. 1.78 pH. Okay, so from the beginning we started at 1.39 and after adding 5 milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide, we have a pH of 1.78 now. I will continue the titration off camera and then bring you back when we are close to the 10 pH range. Welcome back to the titration of glycine with sodium hydroxide. I have been adding sodium hydroxide to the glycine off camera and I have now added a total of 43.20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. At this point the pH is 10.37. I will check the pH again to see what it has changed to and it's around 10.48. We wanted to end in the range of 10 to 10.5. So I will add one more milliliter just to get the plot a little bit closer to 10.5. So now I have added up to 44.10 milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. Let's check the pH. 10.57. Okay, so I have recorded all of the data points. Now I can plot the volume of sodium hydroxide versus the pH, where the total volume of sodium hydroxide will be on the x-axis and the pH will be on the y-axis. We have completed the titration. Next, I will show you how to do the exact procedure but to collect data for an unknown amino acid.